Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting virtual tour experience with Pretty Gritty Tours. I am your host this evening, Chris Stoddinger. And welcome back to those of you who have joined us before. And welcome for the first time for those of you joining us from never before. <laughs> Uh, tonight, we are going to explore some of the movie mystery, history, and trivia of the, I'm going to call it a cult classic, but I think it's a burgeoning classic classic, 10 Things I Hate About You. And we're going to take a look at Stadium High School, because one of the things that frustrates me about this phenomenal film is that I think Seattle claims a lot of the credit for this movie. And in fact, the majority of it was filmed here in Tacoma. Disclaimer to this whole thing. 10 Things I Hate About You, aside from being a phenomenal movie, was filmed entirely on location. There are never any sets used in this touchstone film. And so anytime that you see something, it's because it was filmed somewhere here in the Pacific Northwest. Yes, up in Seattle, but the heart, the beating heart of this film is, of course, Heath Ledger, but followed very closely by Stadium High School. So uh, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you guys are all here. It's good to see you. And uh, yeah, we are going to take a look inside the high school tonight, Crystal. So welcome. Let's let's take a look. 10 Things I Hate About You, just in case, for somehow, if you don't know anything about this, like if your algorithm recommended this to you and you have no idea what's going on, is a film that was released in March of 1999. It's a like coming of age American high school rom-com, but I think it's one of the few that has withstood the test of time. Like it has aged well over the last 21 years. This and the fact that it had like a star studded cast, uh, not just Heath Ledger and Julia Stiles, uh, but David Crummels is in there, a very young Jorson, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, which is still impossible to say, no matter how you do it, uh, Gabrielle Union, Larissa Oleolink, I could go on and on, and I will. So uh, join us, join us for this whole thing. It's, uh, it's an exciting thing. It is a modernized adaptation of Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew, that was turned into this American rom-com and it's it's a standalone masterpiece. I know a lot of people don't know if masterpiece is deserved here, but I hope I make that case by the end of this. Uh, it was filmed from June 8th of 1998 to August 6th, 1998. They had a very short span there during the summer where they used Stadium High School for it. And what was cool is that they actually used uh, students from stadium and teachers from stadium as the extras in this. So it's a very like honest uh, experience across the board. So uh, let's uh, let's do it. Here's our here's our cast right here. And the theme for this entire thing tonight is really going to be firsts. There are so many firsts that we can talk about from people's first roles first breakout roles, first experiences, and so on and so forth. But I think one of the most impressive ones is actually the fact that this was the first screenplay of these two women here. This is Kristen Smith and Karen McCullough Lutz. And this was the first, literally the first screenplay that they wrote. And to have it be the tremendous success that it was is amazing. The fact that it was so good is part of the reason that they later went on to together write uh, Ella Enchanted, The Ugly Truth, She's the Man, another modernized Shakespeare play, uh, and Legally Blonde, as well as The House Bunny. How could I possibly forget The House Bunny? And they are so integral to this whole thing because they were obsessed with the fact that another screenwriter, Amy Heckerling, was in their own words, a genius for contemporizing classic uh, Jane Austen novels into movies, that they wanted to do something like that. So they chose Taming of the Shrew as the, the archaic work that they were gonna modernize, and it, it worked out. Uh, and in fact, they had to race because there was another script that was being considered by Disney, uh, which was called Yikes, I'm trying to remember something like that. Oh, School Slut, that was the name. 
Uh, weirdly enough, Disney passed on that one. 10 Things I Hate About You was the one that they chose and boom, it exploded as the, as the movie that we have today. And they went out and they had to cast all these people there. And there were some big names, crazy enough at the time, uh, of the two Stratford sisters in this, which uh, Julia Stiles and Larissa Olelink. Larissa was the more famous of the two at this point, having just come off of the outrageous success of The Secret World of Alex Mack, which if you're not a millennial or a, I guess, a young Gen X, you probably have no idea what that is. So Google it, enjoy it. It was a, it was a good one for like coming of age Disney movie or movie shows. But of course, um, really the star in a lot of ways, the timeless star of this movie is Stadium High School pictured here. And this is, for those of you who don't know, a functional high school and has always been a public high school. It was originally designed in the 1890s to be a luxury hotel for the city of Tacoma, purchased and financed by the Northern Pacific Railroad. However, there was a financial collapse in 1893. They had to abandon the project, and it was actually slated to be demolished when the demolition crew was like, hmm, hold on a second. And it was recommended that the Tacoma School Board actually purchase this suite building and turn it into a public high school, which is what they did. It was originally Tacoma High School. It later became known as Stadium High School because the architect who finished the project, Frederick Heath, designed, you can see it on the left-hand side of the photo here, the Stadium Bowl, which had an original seating capacity of, I kid you not, 34,000 people. I believe the record, the unofficial record of amount of people attending an event in it is 62,000. Uh, and it was like, the civic amphitheater for the city of Tacoma. Uh, presidents have given addresses down there. They've had uh, high school sporting events, singers, entertainment. They've landed a helicopter in it. They did a reenactment of the fall of Carthage complete with Roman chariots. It was a big deal. Rodeos, military pageants, things were always down in the stadium. And because it was so grand, they're like, well, let's call the high school stadium after the stadium. And so the story goes. Uh, today, the building is still here. It's 295,000 square feet of space modeled after a French chateau. And uh, it is a, it's an exquisite building. Here it is in its glorious past. Back when the street used to run directly in front of it, which I think is very strange, uh, obviously not safe for a high school, but things have changed. And so today, this is the building we have. Uh, and yes, you could fit more people in Stadium Bowl than in the Lincoln Bowl, which is crazy. And yeah, 64,000 people, they didn't park. They took the streetcar because it was back in like 1913 or something along those lines. It was a very long time ago. Uh, so they shuttled them all in. Interestingly enough, uh, that was a big concern at one point because uh, a big part of Pretty Gritty for a while there before pandemic was that we actually gave in-person tours of Stadium High School. So here we are inside the building. We would go all the way from the sub-basement pictured here up to the attic of the building pictured here. And it is a four-story attic, so there was a lot to explore. On this meandering journey through what is technically a 12-story school building, uh, we got inspired <laughs> to launch the original 10 Things I Hate About You movie night at Stadium High, which back in the summer of 2019 was right here. There was a showing of 10 Things I Hate About You on the jumbo screen down there at the bottom of the Stadium Bowl, and we had approximately 7,000 people in attendance, perhaps the greatest event under Pretty Gritty Tour's name uh, with the Stadium Boosters. It was, it was magical. It really was. <clears throat> I think fondly about that night all the time. Uh, and I hope that it gave some homage to the legacy of having like Theodore Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, uh, I believe Warren Harding, William Jennings, uh, Billy Sunday. These are all people that have addressed the masses of Stadium High School down there. But of course, perhaps the most famous thing in the bowl was Heath Ledger. So in 10 Things I Hate About You, 
if you're just catching up, but I'm assuming everybody knows, the perhaps most iconic moment is when Heath Ledger serenades Julia Stiles down here in the Stadium Bowl. It's a cool moment for so many reasons. One that I think not a lot of people know is that the marching band that plays during that song actually recorded that. That's them playing. Uh, but longtime rival of Stadium High School, arch enemy, Lincoln High School, had to get brought in for that project because at the time, Stadium High School didn't have a marching band. Uh, so they brought in Lincoln's marching band, used some of the band members from Stadium, co-mingled them together in what I like to consider a mission of peace, uh, and had them perform the song for that whole thing, which, like I said, perhaps the most iconic moment of the entire film. <clears throat> and what's interesting is in the original script, uh, Heath Ledger, Patrick Verona, that charming man right there running across the stadium stairs, which is a brutal thing to run, by the way, was supposed to sing the Partridge Family's I Think I Love You. Uh, and then they re-scripted it to be the Divinals <laughs> I Touch Myself. Uh, and fortunately, for so many reasons, it was Ledger who actually came up with and then insisted upon singing Frankie Valli's uh, Can't Take My Eyes Off of You. In fact, he was so wrapped up in the curation of this scene that he went to wardrobe and insisted that this is the outfit that he wears. So the immortal Ledger legacy will continue forever and ever. It was his first American film. And he went bananas with it. He went all out, which was an iconic Heath Ledger thing to do. He poured himself into everything he did. Um, for me, it's still crazy to think about Heath Ledger. Uh, I remember I was traveling on a, a study abroad trip back in university back in 2008 when I heard the news that he had passed away at the age of 28 uh, due to an accidental prescription drug overdose. And I think that that legacy of Heath Ledger continues to haunt and inspire people to this very day. Uh, and certainly this movie would not be anywhere near the thing that it is now if it hadn't been for his performance. And it was a first for a lot of people. Like I said, uh, Larissa here on the right was probably the most famous of the actors at the time. And she actually wanted to be switched both her uh, and Julia Stiles had been considered for opposite roles here. Fortunately, Julia Stiles nailed it. And the only role that she wanted was of, of course, uh, the role of Kat. And she went all out. Other actors that were possibly going to be switched, uh, JGL here and David Crummeltz, both auditioned and wanted each other's parts. But fortunately, someone had the common sense to put them rightfully cast in the good spots that they ended up being here. And what's crazy to me is that not only was it filmed at this high school, but these were all basically high school aged um, actors, like 18, 16 through like 20, I think is what we were looking at for the, the general spectrum there. I think the only actor who wasn't that young who was the oldest actor as far as like kids out there was actually Gabrielle Union, who was 26 at the time of filming, which bravo lady, bravo. Like I said, it was uh, Heath Ledger's first American film. Uh, he is already pretty popular for good reason down in the outback, but he wanted to break into the American market. And this was the thing that did it. And my favorite story from that is that the director, uh, Gil Junger, has been quoted at like the 10 year DVD anniversary as having said that they were looking at all these different actors. I think um, Ethan Hunt was on there, Josh Hartnett, Ashton Kutcher was up there. And as soon as Heath Ledger came in, he read for the role. Uh, I was like, thank you so much. I'm on my way out. Uh, they were like, great, we'll, we'll call you. Uh, the director, Gil, turned to everyone that was in the room and he's like, I've never in my life wanted to have sex with a man. But if I was going to, it'd be that one right there. We're casting him. And that was it. It was it was set. Uh, Heath Ledger got it and he he brought the whole thing together. The entire cast 
filmed, like I said, on location. So they were here in Tacoma, Seattle the entire time, staying in Tacoma. And Ledger was actually the last member of the cast to arrive. He showed up a week after everyone else was here and already had started filming. So he already had that like bad boy mystery about him. And what's funny is uh, they were talking about the first time that members of the cast met him and they were actually in the elevator of the hotel. And this guy pictured right here showed up. Uh, I'm trying to remember, he had something, he had a didgeridoo uh, and then like the Aussie accent. And he just like caught the elevator door classic scene, got on. And they talk about the fact that like it was pre-Google, right? So no one had seen him before. And the mysterious stranger that is Heath Ledger just gets on the elevator with them. And they're like, oh, damn, we understand now. And the rest is history. Of the things that he brought with him, not only a didgeridoo, but the uh, 64 Dodge Dart that is Cat's car, that's actually Heath Ledger's American car that he bought so that he would have a way to get around while he was here. And they're like, hmm, perfect. That's going for Cat. Uh, and so they used it for the entire filming. I'm pretty sure he got compensated for it, not just by becoming America's sweetheart, but uh, also financially. Also, Julia Stiles, this was uh, probably, arguably, her biggest breakout role and then went on to lead, like, the amazing career that she's had so far. Uh, and she was also pivotal in really taking the lead on a lot of this uh, and leading the direction that it went up to, I think the most famous moment, uh, she wasn't scripted to cry during the reading of the poem there at the end with the 10 things I hate about you. And so that was just something she went with. And it was crazy because it was a one take scene. They did it and they were done. And they're like, well, that is absolutely perfect. One of the things that I love too is that when the screenwriters were looking for a title of this, uh, one of them was just going through old journal entries, trying to find something. She used to write poems and stuff when she was in high school. And they were like looking for something that they could lean off of. And she found an actual poem that she wrote about all these things that she hated about one of her ex-boyfriends. Uh, and she was like, it's the 10 things I hate about him. And they're like, boom. That's the title and it stuck. Uh, and apparently that guy is still to this day incredibly proud about it, where he will call her sometimes and be like, can you please explain to like my nephew who doesn't believe that this movie is named after your hatred of me in high school. So they've remained close, which is really the moral of the story across the board here. Uh, it was also Julia Stiles first on screen kiss. Uh, which if you're going to go big, go all the way. Uh, Heath Ledger was the first time of all the various roles that she had had where she was uh, scripted to kiss someone on screen. So not, not a bad first kiss to have under your belt there. And it is very confirmed and reported that after the filming of 10 Things I Hate About You from that summer uh, until the next summer, these two were actually an item. So Heath Ledger and Julia Stiles were dating on the down low uh, through filming and then afterwards for one brief blissful year uh, before parting ways forever. Uh, I don't think that they kept in super close contact. A lot of the information has been hard to come by, but luckily uh, when we launched the 10 Things I Hate About You viewing in the stadium bowl, there was a huge um, just swell of interest from former cast members. And in fact, David Krummeltz, uh sent us a personalized like video message to everyone who was there. Uh, other people who had been extras or like actual members of the cast reached out and offered a lot of information about everything. So it was, it was a really cool experience to have there. And we got to understand a little bit more about what was going on down there. For me, getting to tour the building was really exciting as well because you get to see iconic moments like uh you guys are probably familiar with my boy here bogey lowenstein uh he this was a a first time role a first time acting gig for this gentleman right here uh which leads to this iconic scene where they throw the flyers announcing the party at bogey's down the stairwell there that staircase is still there today uh, it descends from the very 
very high tower up at the top of Stadium High School all the way down into the basement, which is really one of the more interesting parts of this school. Like I said, 295,000 square feet of space you're working with here. Uh, there are two sub-basements and then also a network of tunnels underneath the school. So when you're looking at this picture from, I believe, 1906 with the football team, you can see those squares that are in front of them down there. Those are glass tiles that were designed to let light down into the lower levels of the school because they had the gymnasium underground, uh, they had the, the coal chute for the furnace underground, and then a whole network of tunnels down there. Now the tunnels were designed to provide access to the steam pipes because the school has been on a boiler system since it was built to be a hotel uh, and you needed to get access to a lot of that for maintenance. But they also put a wine cellar and a dog kennel underground connected by tunnels. And both of those were designed for it to be accessed by uh, hotel staff providing amenities for the guests there. Again, since it never opened as a hotel, uh, both of those amenities were never needed, and so they ended up just being forgotten, the appendix of the school, and then eventually sealed up. But uh, a healthy portion of those tunnels remain. And so when we were doing tours of that, you would be able to see at least a portion of the tunnels down there. Others we've just documented for posterity. Oh, and this is interesting. Uh, a mummy, when she went there in the 1950s, and that's interesting because uh, I believe there was never a mummy in Stadium High School, but one of the great patrons of the city of Tacoma, Alan C. Mason, who coined the phrase City of Destiny, did bring back a mummy uh, from his journey around the world. While he was in Egypt at the time, it was in vogue to buy mummies. Uh, and so he brought it back, and it's actually now at the archives of the Washington State History Museum, uh, which is that building that's directly across the stadium bowl from Stadium High School. Uh, that sort of mausoleum-looking thing over there is, interestingly enough, in possession of a mummy. Uh, and yes, I believe Larissa and uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt did become an item as well. Unfortunately, they just weren't as iconic, so uh, it often gets left out of the narrative. Too bad. So yeah, the tunnels, incredible part of the school. Uh, not important at all to the filming of 10 Things I Hate About You, but since we're talking about the school, it's something that you should know. Also, the school not only has a series of tunnels underneath it, but also a swimming pool. Uh, this massive Olympic-sized swimming pool is subterranean. Uh, it is underneath Stadium High School, and you can actually notice it if you're walking the campus at night because similar to the glass tiles that they installed in the past, they have these ones above the swimming pool, and they glow blue at night when this pool is lit up. In the archives of Stadium High School, there are actually some fascinating photos from the 1980s when they put in this secondary pool. Um, one of the things that we got to do as Pretty Gritty was help archive and preserve a lot of the materials that the school staff just couldn't get to. Uh, and so going through that, we were able to find a lot of these cool vintage photographs, uh, archive and preserve them for future use down in the basement of the school. And one of the things that we stumbled across was that renovation of the swimming pool in the 1980s. And what's insane about that is that it's not the first swimming pool to be installed there. In the early 1900s, they had two swimming pools, one for the boys and another smaller swimming pool for the girls' swim teams down there, um, which isn't even close to the craziest thing stored underneath this school. The original boilers are uh, still preserved underneath the school down there. They've uh, modernized them in 2005 with new ones down there but they've kept some of those old relics, including this original engineer's desk uh, for the first engineer that was supposed to look after this as a hotel. Uh, it was from 1893. It still has the inspection stamp in one of the drawers down there. And the original doors of that first boiler right there uh, are now preserved as sort of a historic item, a couple levels up from the new boiler system in the school today. 
there are parts that people would recognize from 10 Things I Hate About You uh, and parts that wouldn't. Because in 2005, for the first time in the building's history, it was renovated. And the renovation lasted from 2005 to 2006. Uh, they had a grand reopening and it began functioning as a school again. So if you visit the school today, a lot of it looks very different than it did during the filming of 10 Things I Hate About You because they tried to preserve the historical integrity of the building and in some ways return it to the original look that it was designed to have as a hotel building. Uh, but it lost some, some parts that people were pretty attached to. Of the parts that have been kept in excellent condition, the, the theater up on the second floor is beautifully preserved. Uh, while it used to look like this, they have created a performance art center across the street from the high school today that has a much higher seating capacity. So they've turned this into sort of just a makeshift auditorium breezeway, but it still has that iconic skylight up there. And then of course the balcony up here looking down. Uh, while the skylight no longer reaches to the sky, they use fluorescent lighting for it. Uh, it is still preserved there. Something else that was lost, however, is the cafeteria. This is such a strange one. One of the best archival pieces of information that we have of the original Stadium High cafeteria is actually 10 Things I Hate About You. Uh, they filmed all of their cafeteria shots in the actual cafeteria of the school. But during the 2005 remodel, they took what was the cafeteria, converted it to the library, and then took the former gymnasium and converted it to the new cafeteria. Because in the Performance Arts Center, they had a space for just more, more space, more stuff, uh, and they just kind of upgraded each thing that they could. While the cafeteria originally now was too small for the student body of, I believe, 1800, uh, they are like, okay, well, this will make a perfect library. So they switched it up. And some of the only photos that you can find of that original cafeteria are from this movie, which while we're talking about firsts, I think it's important to note that this iconic scene between uh, David Crummeltz and Andrew Keegan uh, was a moment where Andrew Keegan, the gentleman with the marker here, announced that he didn't know how to draw genitalia. I kid you not, this is on multiple records. He's like, I don't know how to draw a penis. So uh, David Crummeltz, who's getting the penis drawn on his face here, taught him how. <laughs> they took like two hours and they sat down and they just practiced drawing dicks together <laughs> uh, until he got the, the shape and the girth right. It's, it's just something that you can't even possibly make up, but it's a true story. Uh, and while I think he really does get better over time, the, the finalized version, you can tell this is an amateur at work here. This is not someone who spent a lot of time in middle school doing what everyone else was, which is apparently drawing dicks. <sighs> I think this calls for a rainier break. Mm. Taste the cascades. So uh, the more you know. Also, for... Crummelt's firsts, he didn't know how to ride a bike when he came to film. Uh, and so while they've got him on this uh, two-stroke dirt bike here, this was the first time that he had been on any kind of bike. So they spent a few days uh, just in a nearby lot teaching him how to ride a bike before they got him on this dirt bike. Uh, and then they turned it over to a stunt double for his iconic scene uh, where someone actually did drive it off the ledge here. You can see they even built a little ramp uh, and then down into the green belt of Stadium Bowl. This is this is crazy for a lot of reasons. Number one, uh, the green belt section of the Stadium Bowl there used to be additional seating for the Stadium Bowl, uh, but the way that they created the stadium was to take what was once called Old Woman's Gulch, because as the name implies, it was a gulch full of old women, uh, mostly widows of men from Tacoma who had died at sea. Uh, they took that makeshift housing community, uh, relocated them, and then flooded the entire gulch so that these sides would sluice down a road into a flat bottom and then they would create the stadium. 
uh, which was a genius piece of engineering, but they forgot that, uh, oh wait, this now will flood forever. And so in the 1980s, there was a catastrophic flood that actually just scooped one third of the stadium seating right off of the edge there, uh, down and away. And they found that it was going to be too expensive to do major repairs on it. So it's now just a lush green belt in between two sides of seating. So crazy part number one, crazy part number two is that someone on a dirt bike, some underpaid stunt double actually drove that sucker off the edge there. Here is a picture of the stadium as it was under construction. And you can see how they really just demolished that gulch flushed it out into Commencement Bay and then turned it into the stadium that we have uh, together. So, woof. Uh, here is it at its peak where you can see on the far right there that additional seating that has since uh, washed away. But this is one of the major events that they were having at the bottom of the Stadium Bowl in the early 1900s when this was the place to be, the original Tacoma Dome. One of the other really beautiful and fascinating parts of this school, however, is not just the stadium, the basement, and the tunnels, but the attic. The four-story attic is just more or less empty. They've put a bunch of HVAC in there uh, back in 2005, but they use it to store some pieces like this, uh, some of the original molding from the school that didn't pass the muster. Uh, but the real treasure of it is the signatures. Now the story goes that every year since 1906, the principal hand selects an elite group of students for various achievements, athletic or academic or otherwise, and invites them up to the attic to become immortal by leaving their signature up there. And so for the last hundred plus years, uh, some students have been allowed to sign their signatures up in this four story vacuous attic. And the oldest one that I've found, I believe is from a roofer because the school opened as a high school in the fall of 1906. Uh, but we found this painted signature from February 4th, 1906. So I think the legacy was kicked off by someone who was finishing the building for the first sort of like grand opening of the whole thing. Uh, today, I mean, it's a treasure trove. During that tour, if you were allowed to go up and see the signatures, which with us you were, uh, you could just pour through, I mean, endless, countless, thousands of signatures up there. Now, the legend goes that the entire cast was invited up into the attic to sign their signatures up there, that they all went and did, and that the Heath Ledger and Julia Stiles signatures together are up there somewhere. And if it's any indicator, I was leading that tour for over a year and would spend hours looking through signatures, and I have yet to find them. But I have it on good authority from both the principal and who was once the secondary uh, engineer for that building that they're up there. And I've seen a picture of the signature written up there, but I myself have not seen it yet. I have, however, seen the signatures in the attic of Lincoln High School, which it should be noted is, of course, the rival of Stadium High School, but was designed by the same architect, Frederick Keith, uh, around a very similar time period there. And while Stadium High School is a grandiose French chateau, it, uh, it does not have a, a clock tower. So well done, Lincoln. I'll give you guys that. <clears throat> Uh, of the of the things that Touchstone Pictures changed for this particular building, uh, one of the big ones was to rebrand everything as Padua. So because this is based on Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew, they wanted to like have little witty Shakespearean references throughout. Padua is the town where Taming of the Shrew takes place. So they're like, wouldn't be clever to name the high school. And they were right. So uh, everything takes place in the fictional high school of Padua in Seattle. Those <laughs> so uh, one of the things that they do is go through and change it. And uh, if you can see in this picture here, uh, there is an iconic S in the middle of the courtyard for stadium. Uh, and also, I don't know if you can see it, but above in the sandstone, it says Stadium High School. And they removed 
those bricks. Uh, there was a mosaic S made out of tiles originally. And then also the stone above that first brick archway there uh, and replaced them both, one with a giant P, one with Padua, which you can see from the opening credits of that movie, uh, which I just happen to have right here. And uh, they revitalized it. Then when they were done, they went back through and they're like, don't worry, we're gonna put everything back. It'll be fine. Uh, unfortunately for Touchstone, they couldn't figure out how to replace the Mosaic S. So they just put it in a cardboard box and gave it back to the school and it's never been reinstalled, which is kind of a blessing and a curse. Uh, blessing in that seniors have often gone through and removed bricks as their senior prank and really destroyed the integrity of this particular courtyard. Uh, but because that was a uh, touchstone funded concrete S that they replaced the whole thing with, they've never been able to pry that sucker out. And thus it has remained as a keystone to the entire integrity of the courtyard. So it really depends how you look on it. The, the mosaic S, the tiles are still in the possession of the school and someday they may replace them, but it's not looking good. It's just a reminder that if Touchstone ever contacts you to create a coming of age rom-com, always say yes, because they're very good at that. If they want to do your kitchen or bath, always say no, because apparently that's not their thing. Of the legacy that they also left behind, inside the teacher's lounge, you can still find some of the original props created for the film, including the Padua administration sign on top of the vending machine over there. And then directly across from it is also the Padua Cafe, USA, which I'm not sure why they needed to put USA in there. I think about it all the time, but I'm glad that they did. So now Germany can never steal this from us. Of all the things too that they left, um, they left the tiger as the mascot. They changed the name of the school, but they're like, no, nah, stadium tiger, that seems good to us. Uh, and so today when you see the, the courtyard, that S that they have down there is new after Touchstone left. But a lot of the rest of the school is the same way that you would have seen it from the film. Most importantly, the staircases to the side here. So the scene when they're trying to find, they're like screening people to date Kat so that they can get at her sister. Uh, they go through all of these people down in the staircase here. And these are still there today. They're on the wings. And another uh, treasure that we still have in the area. This is Nick Vekulik. Uh, his official IMDb credit is drugged out loser, but he is still here in the Tacoma area. I had the pleasure of meeting him during the 10 Things I Hate About You tour. Uh, so if you if if he's here tonight, please let us know because I would love for him to be a member of this. Um, also, things that you can see. Uh, no, Ms. Perky is no longer at the school, but this particular place that was used as the guidance counselor office is in fact the principal's office today. And it's interesting because the stained glass that used to be all throughout the school is now uh, displayed as art pieces. During the 2005 remodel, they're like, nah, this doesn't pass fire code anymore. Uh, and so they weren't sure what to do with it. So it was just uh, set to the side. And fortunately, a lot of the students uh, led effort to take those stained glass pieces uh, and have them displayed throughout the school with the history was successful. So you can still see them in the building today, just not as windows. If we were gonna go through the building together, uh, I would take you guys to this particular classroom. This is the English classroom where the poem is read, uh, where Cat smashes the patriarchy, where so many great moments happen. And trying to find this particular classroom was very difficult because it doesn't look like this at all anymore. Uh, the classrooms are very posh these days, but looking throughout the windows, I was able to figure out which tower lines up with that. So we had to like frame each shot uh, and went back through and found that this room is actually pictured right here. So if you're standing in front of Stadium High School and you look to the left, you go up two floors and hey presto, that's the English classroom right there on the left-hand side today. You can tell because it looks across at the other French Chateau tower across the courtyard over there. Of things that still remain in the area, uh, because it was all filmed on location. The Stratford House is this particular home right here. Uh, this is on Junet Street. They just did a big remodel to it, 
But this is another historic treasure to the Tacoma area. This particular house was built in 1907 and was primarily owned by the same family for a very long period of time. Uh, it still had a family living in it when they used the interior uh, for filming. So they just put them up in a hotel for a while and they're like, hey, <laughs> do you mind if we just use the inside of your house to film this? And I, I can't overstate just how much money Touchstone Pictures spent on this whole production by filming entirely on location. Because where they could have just built a cheap set and been like, hey, we're done with it. They're like, no, everything has to be filmed in this location, at this store, in this music venue, at the Paramount, in Stadium High School. And so they dropped a lot of cash to make that happen. And I think one of the best parts and most interesting is that they just took over this house uh, which this is what it looks like most recently. I don't have a super contemporary photo of it since the remodel, uh, but this is of the interior. It's a it's a swanky dig. Things that we don't get to see though anymore are the library. Uh, they have converted the original library, like I said, into a new classroom. They've taken the old cafeteria, turned it into the library, and they've taken the old gym and turned it into the new cafeteria, all very, very confusing. But the exterior of the building, which you can see through the hallway here, and the majority of the hallways still have the same vibe to them, although uh, they changed everything to stadium colors. So whereas the lockers would have been that sort of like, I don't know, 1990s high school taupe, they're now all blue and the, the walls are all gold. The classrooms, though, look uh, pretty similar. So you can go through the movie and they line up nicely to them. One of the things I love about the, the science room shot here, not only was it Heath Ledger's idea to play with the fire, like that wasn't something anyone told him to do. He was just like, I'm a bad boy, uh, playing with his Bunsen burner there. But uh, the science teacher who is in this shot as an extra, as a science teacher, fittingly enough, she studied hard for the role literally, um, was also put on the cast list as a, I believe, scenic designer because they paid her extra to set it up to look like a science classroom. And it was her idea to use bullfrogs instead of the smaller frogs that you would normally use for dissection. Uh, and she's like, I think it'll pop more on screen. And what do you know? She was right. A well-deserved credit, well-earned. Uh, this is what some of the classrooms at Stadium High School look like today. Yes, it's a bananas building. Uh, and like I said, with a student body of only 1,800 and 295,000 square feet, you can do some really incredible things in that building. Here is this classroom in the 1940s for the, I don't think it was home ec, I'm pretty sure it was the seamstress class at the time. So, uh <laughs> Good, good stuff. The other thing that I love about this is how much the cast was really pivotal in the, the direction of this film in every sense of the word. Uh, this is Heath Ledger here with Julia Stiles and then the director Gill pictured there on the right. And the thing that made it so good by the cast's estimation and mine as well, is that they were, it just was, it was a natural thing. They were these young people uh, and they were just reacting normally. And the brilliance of the script is that they really were allowed to be honest characters. Uh, originally the director didn't want to take this particular movie, but he read the script and he's like, damn, this is really good and honest. Uh, what's funny is reading through the comments from the, the screenwriter is one of the biggest complaints that they got, weirdly enough, uh, is that people were like, why is Kat so angry? Uh, I don't see any justification for her to be so angry. And they're like, bro, <clears throat> sometimes as a teenage girl, you're just angry. Um, and I don't feel like I have to justify that. And sure enough, 21 years later, it's still getting critical acclaims. It has aged well. It is one of the few coming of age rom-coms that still holds up in an ever-changing world. So bravo, bravo ladies. Uh, one of the things that I think people talk about the most 
is the school building itself. And I want to give you guys two opportunities to savor that. The first one here is just a flyover so that you can really see Stadium High School in all of its glory. So enjoy. <laughs> So yeah, we've got some we got some questions here. Yes, this particular shot is from Seattle. Uh, this is when they're on the paddle boat after boo, 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 uh, doing paintball in Gasworks Park. So yeah, I'm not saying that none of it was filmed in Seattle. I'm just saying it's not a Seattle movie. If anything, it's a Pacific Northwest movie. Uh, obviously, like um, I'm trying to think here, Gasworks Park. Paramount Theater, uh, the bookshop. These were all Seattle shots. Then Stadium High School, Ted Brown Music, and a cup. Uh, and of course, the Stratford House are all Tacoma shots. And so having it all filmed on location between those two is good. Uh, I just think Seattle takes a little more than their fair share of credit about the whole thing. And I kind of feel that way about Seattle and everything. So no big deal. Ah, thank you, Kate. I'm glad you brought this up. Yes. Letters to Cleo. Letters to Cleo is the band, the band of this movie. I think they represent everything, really, when you get right down to it. Uh, but they play multiple times throughout, though most famously is, of course, this shot from the roof of Stadium High School. So here's the thing. There's just unbelievable amounts of controversy about this entire thing. But um, they did try at one point to just put them on a platform uh, at the bottom of the stadium, elevated out over Commencement Bay, and then they were going to green screen the whole thing. And the director was like, no, garbage. You guys are on contract. You're going on the roof. And letters to Cleo in every interview you read about this uh, hated it. They hated every moment of it. They didn't want to do it. Uh, as you can see here, it's not like they built something super strong here it's a tiny platform and it's high up there my friends it is it's on a cliff side on the upper upper level of a building the wind is strong it's terrifying uh but they went up there and they did it one shot and good thing too because i believe it was five hundred and fifty thousand dollars every time they sent the helicopter to shoot that um and they they did it so this is Letters to Cleo actually playing on the roof of Stadium High School. Letters to Cleo went on to do a ton of stuff. Uh, this is something I care about. I don't know if anyone else, but uh, the, the lead singer here went on to do Rachel Lee Cook's singing voice in Josie and the Pussycats. I feel like I've said too much about myself by saying those words out loud right now, and I'm just going to live with it. Uh, they were on top of the roof. For the entire closing credits there, they sent the helicopter through, bada bing, bada boom, got it. Uh, and then here is the pretty gritty tour staff in the same spot. Uh, and you can see the spot where they anchor uh, people who need to repel off the roof to do stuff. And that's what they tethered uh, the, the stage to up there. So technically it couldn't fly away, but well, you never know. Uh, but you have to go up to the fourth, level of the attic and then uh go through this hatch in the top roof there and you're up there and then there's just nothing it's just the wide open space uh and your opportunity to meet god uh to give you guys some more really great shots of the interior of the school i'm actually going to share with you our friends from uh evening magazine tacoma local saint bryant and i got to hang out for a while in stadium high school right before we did the tour of 10 things i hate about you and i want you to take a look at that right now 
The world is divided into two people, people who went to stadium and people who wish that they had. It was originally built to be a luxury hotel in the style of a French chateau. But after fire gutted the property, Tacoma turned it into one of the most beautiful high schools in the world, eventually naming it after Stadium Bowl next door. It's essentially our Hogwarts, plucked right from the imagination. Chris Stottinger is the owner of Pretty Gritty Tours. He says his hour-long tour of the high school, which takes place from the sub-basement all the way up to the attic, are always popular. You know, everyone always enters stadium with a preconceived notion. They know that the exterior is gorgeous, but people are blown away by how much they get to see and just how expansive the building really is on the inside. We're in the library, which was the school cafeteria back in the 1990s, when the Heath Ledger romantic comedy, 10 Things I Hate About You, was shot here. In the teacher's lounge, you can find props from the film. I'm excited for you to see the attic. I think it's probably the most surprising part of the building. The attic is four stories tall and requires a lot of ducking under pipes and vents. So the tradition has been since 1906 that every year at the end of the year, the principal invites an elite group of students up to sign their signature in the attic. Uh, what you're looking at is the collection of over 100 years of signatures. I even have it on good authority that the uh, signature of Heath Ledger is actually up here still. That we didn't find, but we saw some amazing views from the attic window. We saw the swimming pool, the subterranean tunnels that crisscross under the school, and the boiler room said to be the most haunted part of the tour. And I went to check on it. What was that? I have no idea. Some guests are given the same detectors ghost hunters use, and one went off at the site of the old auditorium. I suspect sometimes that somebody fell. It's hard to say. There's much more than we can show. The people who took the tour raved, including a stadium grad from 1948. How does it make you feel to know that you go to a school that is the envy of the entire country? Oh, I'm famous, right? <laughs> Stadium High, a special school that makes everyone who walks its halls feel special too. So, <laughs> yeah, I've seen some comments here. For sure the place is haunted. There have been so many experiences that I've had in that building, and uh, I wish I had the picture of it. Someone has a picture of this little girl ghost from the basement of that building. It still literally and figuratively haunts me to this day, but uh, there have been so many things. I used to go through that building to get it ready for the tour and unlock the doors, and there was just one time that I was down in the boiler room and like a box slid over from behind a wall. I was like, oh, that's crazy that someone's down here right now. Uh, Cause usually no one was down there. And like one of my big projects was to get all that material archived. So I was like, I'm glad someone's taking care of this. And I went over and there was no one there. I was like, okay, probably just slid totally fine. Uh, and then I heard from the other side of the room where I had just come from the sound of a little girl giggle. And then the door closed and I hate it so much to this day. I hate it, but I, I love stadium and I am glad forever and always that the, the legacy of 10 things I hate about you is something that we can cling to. I really believe firmly uh, and passionately that it is a rom-com that has withstood unbelievably the test of time. So I, I'm glad that you guys joined me for that. If you've enjoyed yourself tonight and you'd like to show your appreciation, you can always tip your guide on the front page of prettygrittytours.com right there on the PayPal button. Uh, tips are always appreciated and allow us to continue presenting these virtual tours for free. And hey, now that we're on YouTube and broadcasting, if you want to be in the know, you can always, I can't believe I'm going to say this, like and subscribe. Yikes, that was actually painful to get out. But true, true. Uh, stay up to date with everything we've got going on. We are going to be doing uh, ghost stories and mysteries of Washington State. We are going to be looking at never-before-seen footage of the SS Governor shipwreck uh, and talking with Master Diver Robert Mester coming up here soon. And I've even got a special tour coming up, The Hunt for Sasquatch. So... Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up with Pretty Gritty Tours. 
uh, including hopefully very soon a traditional place names tour in partnership with the Puyallup tribe. So it's like endless good stuff coming down the chute. I always appreciate you guys being here. You're, you're the light of my evening. So I wish I had a tribute film for Heath Ledger queued up, but I'm just going to let you guys do that on your own. Rest in peace, buddy. Until next time, my friends, I'm Chris Stoninger, encouraging you, as always, to keep on exploring, because every day out there is a gift. Let's unwrap another.